that's the Jewish uh, school and uh, security guard there just shows you that uh, the Jews are under threat these days and we don't really appreciate that we say we're in a, a country of freedom but uh, are we when Jewish community have to have security guards on the school uh, they, sh they should be free to be able to have school and worship even at the synagogues they have security guards you know so where's the freedom there you know I feel sorry for the Jewish people it's not freedom and I've just had my car done and uh, it was a caliper uh, so they've checked it out so I'm really pleased with that so I'm going to go home and uh, and uh, chill out just have a bit of a break I've just done a bit of evangelism town and in Cheetah Mill and I'm just having a rest so I'm going to go home and have a bit of a rest now a cup of tea so yeah uh, I want to talk about apologetics um, uh, is apologetics valuable? Should we use apologetics? What apologetic method uh, should we use? Um, so yeah, so here we go. We'll go. We're going to go back home. And, uh, Apologetics. Yeah, Kevin Williams made a video of Puritan Fellowship about apologetics and preaching. He said we just need to not be using apologetics because it kind of takes us down rabbit trails and stops us from preaching the simple gospel. And in a sense, there is a truth in that when you're street preaching. Um, the truth of the gospel people could try to get away from thank you that was very kind of you thank you people could try and get away from the simplicity of the gospel and, and especially in street preaching uh, you go down rabbit trails uh, people's questions that just try to get your balance and away from the gospel so there's a truth in that but check out his video um, Grace Church, Grace Fellowship, or Puritan Fellowship, uh, it used to be, and he's done a video on street preaching and apologetics, but I, I also take exception, I disagree with him as well, even though I agree with him in some things. Um, it talks about have a reason for the faith that's within you, Paul, when he went to Areopagus uh, in Mars Hill in chapter 17 of the book of Acts, he he did the three C's, he talked about creation, he talked about conscience, he talked about Christ. So that was apologetics, you know. So the Bible shows that there is uh, a room for apologetics. We do need to be careful that we don't depend on apologetics because it says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, this, you know, that we're, we're spiritual. And uh, it's only the Holy Spirit can open our eyes to the truth. and and. You know, it's not arguments or reason can do that. So the Spirit of God is the one that opens our eyes to the truth. Um, so all those uh, issues uh, we take we take notice of, and we also remember Paul said we preach Christ crucified. So you know we have to stick to the simplicity of the gospel and proclaim the gospel, but. We do need to give a reason. We do need to answer questions. People will ask questions. Paul reasoned in the marketplace. The Lord actually reasoned with the Pharisees. So it's not wrong to give a defense of the faith. So I found in my own experience going on the university campuses in the UK, in a Manchester, Liverpool, etc. 
that the students really appreciate it when you're answering the questions. They really, really value uh, answering the questions, you know. Um, they value the fact that you know things and you're able to answer their questions. On, in street preaching, being able to answer questions, people appreciate it. They value the fact that you know what you're talking about if you can defend uh, the faith. So, that's in my experience. Like I said, the danger is if you try to depend on arguments and not on the Spirit of God, not on the Word of God, the danger is if you deviate from the simplicity of the Gospel. But if you keep the Gospel centre, if you depend on the Holy Spirit, use the Word of God, but then answer questions, it can be a powerful help in proclaiming the Gospel. A lot of street preachers and evangelists are known for being anti-intellectual and I don't think it's something that we should be known as being anti-intellectual. There's a, a lot of anti-intellectualism in the church that a lot of Christians and people in the church don't value study, they don't value scholarship, they don't value um, these things and I think it's wrong and I think uh, it's to the detriment of the church. There is a danger of being coming uh, overtly too academic in the church. Um, some kind people are there. You know, there is a danger of being too academic and too scholarly, etc. And, you know, we appreciate that. And that's why we need the anointing in the preaching. But Paul says, you know, study to make yourself approved, we're to study the Word of God, we're, we're to be people steeped in the Word of God and studying. So, you know, God doesn't put a premium on ignorance and, you know, and has encouraged us to, to defend the faith and to be scholarly in the process. So, what kind of apologetic methods uh, would I recommend? First of all, I would recommend the apologetic of love. That if we're not loving in our demeanor and in our character and in our motives and in what we're doing, then we're not going to get anywhere. It says the love of Christ constraineth us. So we need to have love. We need to have the love of God in our hearts. But then there are various methodologies. There's presuppositional apologetics. There's uh, evidentialism. There's reformed. And there's the cognitive case. I never stick to one apologetic method. I believe that no one method is perfect. Uh, I use presuppositional apologetics quite a bit on atheist. It's a good way of dismantling the kind of world view. I use evidential apologetics when it comes to people on the street generally, uh, talking about the historical Christ, evidence for uh, the resurrection, historically speaking. Um, evidence from a scientific point of view about God. Sorry about that. I use, um, I think I use those two in the main. I kind of do, do my own research and I think you should specialize in areas that you're happy with. I'm specialised in uh, the Gospels, um, defending the Gospels, the four Gospels. So I've read literature on uh, the Gnostic Gospels and historical information about how to defend um, how to defend uh, the, the, the historical veracity of the Gospels. Uh, so those are just some areas that that I have specialized in. One thing I try to do is I try to keep abreast of arguments what people are propounding. I listen to Muslim scholars, Muslim apologists, atheist apologists, and I'll listen to them quite a bit, make notes and then go and do some research on them. Recently uh, Alex Malpass, an atheist who's uh, got a PhD in logic, uh, recently listened to quite a few of his videos, made notes, and then went and did a bit of my own research. So, you know, these are things that 
that um, that you to do to keep on top. You've got to be researching and making sure that you're ahead of the game. But the people that have influenced me in apologetics has got to be Greg Benson, Mike Lacona, uh, Gary Habermas, uh, R.C. Sproul. Theology and what your theolo theological position has a lot to do with your apologetic method. My theological p p p position is the Westminster Confession, uh, and if you've got a good theology, then that helps you to have helps you in apologetics as well because it gives you a kind of foundation for why you're making your arguments in the context of making your arguments. So those are just some thoughts on apologetics. It's a valuable tool for the church and in evangelism and uh, I find it very helpful in studying atheism, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness, etc. And just having information on these uh, cults and religions and movements and studying them it helps you quite a lot when you are out on the streets. For example, I, I did a bit of research on the Jehovah's Witnesses. I met a Jehovah's Witness last week. He asked me a few questions. I was able to show him in uh, Matthew 28 concerning the Trinity. And that research stood me in good stead. So, you know, these things are very helpful. And I would encourage you to, to, to study. A good place to study apologetics excuse me, is the C.S. Lewis Institute. Uh, Phil Fernandez has done a lot of lectures on apologetics. Um, Greg Benson's uh, lectures, Defenders of the Faith. And um, what else is there? Uh, if you go to Labrie Fellowship, there's a quite a lot on apologetics there. But for me, Greg Benson's uh, material is very helpful and uh, Gary Habermas for the historical Christ is very helpful. Those are the two main areas that I go to uh, when I need encouraging, when I need more equipping for what, when I'm uh, doing apologetics. So, so we're home and I'm um, just going to go and have a cup of tea now. So.